Quantum computing. For many, this is often considered a daunting subject. After all, the mere mention of something that doesn't seem to obey the laws of classical physics has raised some generations of researchers. It's a bit like saying that when you toss a ball, it travels all the paths it can possibly take in the universe before landing right back in your hand. Based on what we see with our naked eye, that sort of behavior definitely isn't intuitive. So why bother with anything on the quantum level? Simple. It has potential. Utilizing quantum computers has been shown to have an aptitude for high-speed processing. In 2019, Google reported supposedly solving a given optimization problem with a quantum computer in 200 seconds. In comparison, the fastest supercomputer would have taken an estimated 10,000 years to determine the answer. To truly understand the extent of quantum computing, it's worth taking a step back to look at the general picture. In an ideal world, computers take in a certain input and efficiently process the information to create an output. All is well when the size of the input is small and the idea is simple. For example, a basic question of 1 plus 1 can be figured out using a handheld calculator. Classical computers, such as the computer you might see in your local school, or library, or even your pocket can easily calculate the solution. But what if the problem was a little bit more complex? Let's visualize the issue with classical computers by considering the following problem. Tetrahedralization involves taking a 3D figure with straight sides and allowing lines to be drawn between the vertices so the entire figure is made up of only tetrahedrons. The tetrahedralization of a cube is quite obvious, but what happens when the number of vertices gets larger and larger? How would a computer determine if the figure can even be broken down into tetrahedrons? The primary solution on a regular computer has been so far to brute force the problem, but as the number of vertices denoting the size of the problem increases, so do the number of possible combinations that need to be tested. In the case of the last question, this is what computer scientists refer to as MP-complete or MP-hard problem, where the solution to that problem can be easily checked in polynomial time, but figuring it out on a normal computer can take a non-deterministically polynomial or NP amount of time. In context, consider how easily any figure can be constructed using tetrahedrons as unit building blocks. There clearly exists a tetrahedralization of this constructed figure. But working backwards requires each possibility be checked and the worst case scenario dictates that as the number of vertices in the figure approaches infinity, the runtime increases several times that rate. Several properties of quantum computers make them especially valuable. A classical computer has bits that only have two possible states, 0 and 1, that when put in the context of a sequence of these bits, creates the code. Quantum computers utilize units known as qubits, which have a total of three states as a result of an additional property called superposition. In superposition, the exact state of the given qubit is not entirely known, rather, it's expressed in terms of probabilities. Quantum entanglement, on the other hand, involves the dependency of a state of one unit on another and vice versa. As a result, information can be shared at a rate classical computers are unable to achieve, and new patterns emerge across the board. These added components make it possible to solve or create complex problems that classical computers would have a hard time cracking. It is worth noting that, depending on precisely what you're hoping to pursue, the level of knowledge you need to have is rather different. To understand to its very depths the characteristics of quantum computing will take years to fully comprehend, but that is not to discourage you. We'll be taking each topic and breaking it down into digestible bites, explaining them in short, understandable videos. Just remember, keep reading, keep learning, and keep being curious. Who knows? Perhaps one day, someone might solve some of the world's most difficult math problems or create an uncrackable code. And, who knows, that person might be you.